For every single one of our units, students are going to have a vocabulary activity. The strategy that we use for each of these activities is called the Frayer model. The reason we've chosen this specific strategy is because it requires students to have a much more deep understanding of each of the vocabulary words rather than just looking up a definition, writing it down, and moving on. The Frere model requires students to interact a lot more with each of the vocabulary words and it's going to help them understand what that word looks like in different contexts and therefore be able to help them identify these concepts as they're reading the text. For each of the definitions, we have provided a QR code that is going to take students to a specific link that is going to give them the accurate and most helpful definition for each word. If we were in a classroom setting together, we would be able to circulate throughout the room and ensure that every student was working with the definition that was gonna be beneficial in the unit. If a student is just Googling a word and has no guidance, they might encounter a definition that isn't exactly what we're looking for since so many words have different definitions depending on the context of the word. So it's very important for students to use the QR code and go to the specific link provided so that they are able to access the definitions that are gonna be the most beneficial for them and their understanding. So for example, if you take the word conflict, which is one of the literary devices that students will use in our units with the Frere model, if you just Google define conflict, the definition that you're going to get is a serious disagreement or argument. While that is true, that is what that word means in the context of it being a literary device, this definition doesn't give us what students need. Students are gonna need a resource that explains the difference between internal conflict and external conflict, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society. There's a lot more to the literary device than just an argument or disagreement. So it's really important for our students that they actually use the links that we're providing so that they're getting the most information that's going to help them with the unit. After you have accessed the link that is gonna give you the accurate definition for the word, you're going to use the four quadrant Frayer model. If that seems confusing, that's okay. We're gonna take a deeper dive and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works in this example. So let's take a look at an example of what the Frere model looks like in the workbook with definitions that students are going to be encountering as they progress through the unit. So the word we're going to use for this example is connotation. And as you can see, we have it right here in the middle of the model. You'll also see that we have the QR code that students will use to access the working definition. When they access that link, we want them to write down the definition in the top left quadrant. As you can see here, we've copied the definition. Connotation refers to a meaning that is implied by a word apart from the thing which describes it explicitly. From there, we want students to put the definition in their own words. So the definition reworded here, it's the emotion or reaction that a word causes, not the literal definition or description. So this quadrant is pretty much just scratching the surface of the definition. From there, we're gonna move on to characteristics. We want students to write down as many characteristics of the word as they can think of. So the characteristics written down here for connotation, we wrote it can be an implication, a feeling the reader has caused by the word choice of the author, cultural, personal, or social knowledge and experience that influences someone's understanding, so by writing down as many characteristics as they can think of, students are building on the definition that they started working with in the first quadrant. From there, we move on to the third quadrant, which is when students are going to come up with examples or synonyms for the word. Here, the example we chose was the word home, which technically means a place someone lives, but the connotation of the word home could be positive or negative, depending on the experience of the individual. The connotation could be warm, comforting, welcoming, and peaceful, or it could be stressful, anxiety-inducing, lonely, etc. So as students begin working in this third quadrant, they're further clarifying and they're creating real-world examples, which is really going to help solidify their understanding. The final quadrant is when students are going to come up with non-examples or antonyms. So things that connotation is not would be a literal definition, an example of something or a simile or a metaphor. This final box really solidifies their understanding and it's helping students eliminate things that might be a disruption to the clarity. 
I hope this example clarifies how to use this model in the student workbook. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us in the Facebook group, send us an email, or you can send us a DM on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching.